Hey, what's going on YouTube? Lionel here, and I do have a, uh, another fragrance review for you. Um, I did Boys Blondes earlier. Um, the next fragrance review I'm doing is a uh, very exciting one for me, and a um, uh, uh, very special one for me. So, you know, I talk about the niche design of things quite a bit. Um, this is probably, for me, uh, the best oriental um, a designer on the market and if it was niche uh, in its uh, in the formulation that I have I mean I, I would gladly have paid um, a niche uh, price for it. Uh, it comes from the House of Eve's um, Saint Laurent. Sorry about that my son. I'm in here. Go sit down. Go sit down and I'll come. Give me a second. Um, Eve Saint Laurent. It is called uh, M7. Uh, the beautiful uh, amber bottle. Uh, I did split this, so this is what I have remaining. It's about 25 mils. I split two bottles of this actually. So, because um, it was blind, I had never smelled it before. Well, actually, you know what? I didn't buy it blind. Actually, uh, a guy named Ross uh, gave me some, uh, but I wanted to split. I didn't know if I would use that much of it. Eventually, I fell in love with it, and uh, it is probably my one of my favorite uh, fragrances in my definitely um, definitely top three um, could could fight for another spot uh, just depends on how I feel that day um, so let's get into it it was created in 2002 it is considered a um, an oriental woody um, the notes are the top are rosemary mandarin orange and bergamot uh, in the heart you have oud and vetiver and in the base you have amber and musk um, Let's talk about what it smells like. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's first let's talk about this. 2002. Uh, there weren't many fragrances around really boasting of the oud, the agarwoods, uh, which called. So M7 was kind of uh, unique in that vein. Um, now oud is in everything. Everybody oud is a new. I don't know whatever else was out there. I can't remember what else was out there. Um. So let me tell you what it smells like. You first spray it, um, it goes on um, almost medicinal, cough surface, orangish. It's like orange, the orange and the res, uh, the rosemary and the bergamot are kind of giving it this sharp take on it. I mean, your initial spray is a sharp take, and that is only the top. Let me tell you this this top is very, 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 very 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 short short-lived it transitions into the heart fairly quickly um, and once you get into the heart that's when you're getting this medicinal oud slight vetiver slight vetiver maybe you know it's there but it's not really really present and then immediately the amber sort of joins the party and um, really what you have at this point is this uh, you know, sort of oudish, amberish, musky, little cherry cough syrup smell almost. Um, uh, um, the, the, the orange and the bergamot are non existent in this fragrance. I mean, after maybe your first spray. Um, the amber in it is very smoky, so I think the amber is giving it this smoky quality. The oud is sort of giving it this medicinal, you know, oud kind of has this, it's almost a filling in your throat kind of. It kind of gives you this taste in your mouth, kind of like this sticky and, and damp, almost like wet sap or, or, or man, you, you ever smell like wood in your, you know, if you ever have like something that's, dry rotted almost you know wood that's in your backyard or something something like that it has that kind of oudish icky inky feeling to it with um a very nice deep heavy smoky amber um with this almost cherry cough syrup vibe uh and maybe just a little bit of, of muskiness in it with some vetiver. Um, 
I, I would really argue that the key components of this fragrance are oud, or that, the, the oud that's in here, and uh, amber, uh, with some other stuff that maybe that rosemary, orange combination, kind of giving it this fruity sort of vibe, sweet vibe. Uh, it is quite sweet, but it's sweet in such a unique way. I mean, I, I talk about unique sweetness. It's not sticky sweet. It's not shurgy sweet. It's not even copper sky sweet. It's um, cough syrup sweet. I mean, I guess that's how you would think about it. It's, you know, it's, it's sweet without being, you know, cavity inducing sweet. It's not like uh, you know, it's not gourmandish sweet or, or foodie sweet. It's, it's like, yeah, I mean, I, it's like cough syrup. If you ever taste cough syrup, like fruity cough, grape cough syrup or, or cherry cough syrup that you get, you know, they try to make it a bit more palatable with, with, with that sweetness in there. This is exactly what, what this has in it. It sort of has, I mean, that the, the bottle color is perfect for it. it it's It's sort of amberish, reddish, oudish, woodish, something. Now, you get that, so you get that amber oud quad, uh, quality for, you know, um, you, you're two hours into the fragrance, three hours into the fragrance, it starts to get, it, it gets a bit powdery, but not baby powder, it just kind of gets Powdery. I, I don't even know how to explain it. I'm trying to think of another fragrance that does that. Um, you know what? I wish I had some more notes. I, I, I can't. I really can't. I really can't compare M7. There, there is nothing on the market like M7. Um, definitely in a designer market by far. I would even argue. I don't know many niche fragrances that can really compare to M7. Um, Nothing smells like it. It it is the, the the reason this is important is I mean there's nothing like it on the market. I mean I just I I I haven't come across in all of my sampling and everything that I do, I haven't come across anything quite like M7. Uh this was a Tom Ford creation when he worked for uh Yves Saint Laurent. I mean and he left them with a I mean I mean I don't know what the sales were like. Uh, but there is a there is cult love for this fragrance, and I can see why. When I when I first smelled it, I was like, yes. The second time I smelled it, I was like, I'm buying it. Now, if somebody didn't want to split it, I was still getting it. I mean, because it is a dandy of a fragrance. I mean, it is just it's perfect. It's smoky, you know. It's smoky without being like campfire smoky. It's sweet without being gourmand. It's oudish without being run of the mill, you know, because everything is kind of oudish now. It's sort of, it's sort of a. Uh, stop, guys. Hold up for a second. I said I'm in here. Sit down. Um, if I restart my computer, guys, it messes up. So, I, so I want to get this review done. This is like my third take on it. Um. So let, let's talk about it. Projection five. Uh, it projects monstrously. Um, not a man monster, not one million monster, but it's in that vein. I mean, its projection is a five. Um, uh, silage five. Silage five. It leaves a trail, and it's gonna leave it for a while. I mean, people will smell you. Um, Scent five. There's absolutely nothing on the market that that. I mean, I haven't. I don't remember oud wood and Tuscan leather and those things. I don't know how similar those are to M7. I think I heard one of those. One of those scents similar to M7. I don't know. Um, outside of that, nothing under the price point of it. Like a hundred dollars for this bottle full is well worth it. I mean, it is well worth a dollar a meal. Well worth it. Um, the bottle does the, I mean, I love the classy bottle design. It's very, very thick and heavy. Um, sort of like the Gucci Pour Home. It sort of has that, uh, you know, density to the glass. Uh, the top is just, you know, this really dense plastic. And that's the sprayer, square sprayer M7. It almost kind of has like a, 
looks like a seven almost, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, so the silage and longevity complement factor. Um, now, um, I did get, you know what, man, I got, I got compliments on it. People just like, what, what is that? You know, it was kind of like, yeah, this is a, what, what is that you're wearing? So it's not like a, dang, you smell great. It's like, wow, what is that you're wearing? Kind of a, kind of a compliment. It was more of a, it was more of a, uh, an inquisitive type of compliment. It was like, it smells, smells unique, it's different. Uh, you will stand out. This is a perfect, perfect, perfect clubbing scent. Uh, you can wear it in the office, but you will stand out. That's for sure. Get ready to stand out. Get ready to be talked to about it. <laughs> um, um, day scent, cooler weather, maybe one spray if it's warmer. Uh, but definitely cooler weather. You going out, man, you're going to make an impression on a chick. Um... <laughs> Or a guy, I guess, whoever you're you're into. Um, overall, it is a five out of five fragrance. Listen, M7 is perfect. Is it powdery? Yes. Is it, you know, cherry cough syrupish? Yes. Is it kind of a, you know, medicinal oudish? Yes. Is it sweet? Yes. Can a chick pull it off? Yes. But she would be one of those dark, confident chicks. Um... I think it will work. It should have been considered a unisex, but I mean, it just edges on masculinity. It, it is it is a quintessential metro uh, 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 metro dark kind of of masculine scent. So it's masculine, but it's not like guy like you know you know bravado type guy. It's kind of that dude who man, it's kind of like a little player type of type of scent to it. Um, you know. A bit flirtatious. Uh, it does lack in uh, versatility. I'll tell you that. I, 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 I mean, I, I don't see this as a casual scent. Uh, this is a this is a special, you know, given to now. When it was first came out, it probably wasn't. But even then, I just think he pushed the envelope. I think Tom Ford pushed the envelope to the extreme on a scent, even in 2002. I mean, I still think it's edgy for 2012. So overall, hands down, perfect fragrance. Hands down, I will keep this in my collection. I got 25 mils now. I may just buy a backup bottle and put it up in my shelf. And I don't have a backup bottle of anything except for Royal Oud. So Royal Oud, I have a backup bottle of. And M7, I give a backup bottle of. This is a true five-star fragrance. Quality is, is I mean, you're, 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 you're like, quality is unquestionable. Uniqueness is unquestionable. Projection, longevity, unquestionable. The only thing is, will you like it? That I can't call. I don't know if you're going to like it or not. It was a love for me. Um, I will keep this fragrance. I have, again, it's in my top three fragrance scent, favorite scents right now. So, uh, Rose Oud, this one, and Royal Oud are my top three scents. And, man, it, this scent is a dandy. So, it's a keeper. I love it. Uh, appreciate you watching this review. I went much longer, but I really want to express my deep, devotion for m7 i appreciate you guys uh, you yeah, have a good weekend